take a team of young budding eco-scientists from slimy green algae and then give them a challenge. Can they make themselves some biofuel? So does this test definitively prove that we can actually get a biofuel from algae? It will mean that they have to get their hands dirty and at a carbon neutral farm they get an introduction to organic sustainable farming. If you're using biofuels then you're taking up the space that people are using to use food. Now is their chance to put theory to the test. Can they use waste materials to successfully create a biofuel that can power a tractor? The students are all studying science at Bodmin College in Cornwall. They're setting off on a journey to discover if their school bus can be powered by biofuels. Do you reckon we're going to be able to put biofuels into proper mainstream production? I've heard that they can use algae instead of plants to make biodiesel. The, the team has travelled to Plymouth and Devon. Could the sea have what they're looking for, a sustainable energy source? Hi there, we're students from Bodmin College and we're researching biofuels and the fact that the sea could possibly be a good source for that. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yep, um, I've just been collecting algal samples from these rock pools here and um, we do a lot of biofuels research at Plymouth Marine Laboratory. If you'd like to join me up there then I can explain to you a bit more about biofuels in general and the kind of research that we do. The team joins Claire at the Plymouth Marine Laboratory, where scientists are leading the research into biofuels from the sea. Right, so this is a sample that we collected from the beach. We've placed it into this culture room with um, lots of light, because the algae needs light to photosynthesise um, to grow up to a higher density. So how many different species of algae might there be in that sample? There could be like hundreds. When the cell density is increased slightly, um, we'll analyse them to use as a potential biofuel. The algae all need a carbon source to grow, so air contains a small amount of carbon dioxide. So the fact that carbon dioxide is being taken out of the air by the algae, is that going to help towards reducing things like global warming? Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely a really one of the main reasons we've been working on algae, because it's a really effective way of capturing the carbon that's in the environment. But how do you grow algae? It seems you need something called a bioreactor. Three of the students have the responsibility of getting to grips with the technical what I really details. Want to show you is the fact that algae are very easy to grow, and all we really have in this bioreactor is a reservoir of nutrients, a small aquarium pump, and some tubing. The algae get pumped around the tubing, and as they go around, they get exposed to light, and this causes them to photosynthesize, and the algae start to grow. The remaining students are in one of the labs and they have a crucial question. So does this test definitively prove that we can actually get a biofuel from algae? Yes, um, we're going to have a look at the lipids that are present within the algal sample. So we're going to use acetone which should break open the cells and release the lipids. Next they add some marker stain that will turn orange to show if any oil has been released from the algae. And you can see these around very distinct green blobs and those blobs are actually made of oil. About half of the, the cell is made up of the oil. So if you can get the conditions just right to grow this, you can produce a lot of oil. Meanwhile, the experiment continues. They're vigorously mixing the samples to release any oil and then spin them in a centrifuge to separate the mixture into layers according to density. Now I know that lipids are found in a cell membrane, but what about the ones we're looking at today? No, these lipids are formed internally inside the cell. Um, they're a form of like fat storage. And as you can see, um, the lipids that are present within the algal sample have floated to the surface and they've been stained. Algae do make the compounds that are needed for the production of biofuel. You hear in the news that people are using substances like chip fat to power their cars. Is this possible? If we all started powering our cars with uh, chip fat, there would be no fat left to cook the chips. So th there has to be a balance between the different sources of energy that we use. Algae will provide one solution. I think agriculture will provide another solution. And I think it's worth your while going and speaking to some people who are looking at using agricultural waste to see how they're 
uh, contributing to this uh, energy crisis which is starting to cause problems across the globe. Having discovered that algae from the sea may be a way to make biodiesel in the near future, it's time for the Bodman team to see if agriculture has something to offer. Next stop, a farm that produces its own biodiesel from waste. But first, how sustainable is the farm overall? So we gather that you run a sustainable farm here. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means? You know, what is, what is a sustainable lifestyle? It is a means of uh, living your life which, which satisfies this generation but doesn't prejudice future generations' uh, needs. Um, you know, f using fossil fuels, using other exhaustible supplies is simply not sustainable by definition. And what we have to do is to find some way of, of changing that. So we hear that you use a lot of energy efficient technologies. Um, before using energy efficient technology, one has to uh, look at first of all how to reduce the amount of energy you use. And that we have done in the house uh, by insulation, by using uh, low energy lighting. But having done that, uh, then the next thing is to uh, generate our electricity. We have three kilowatts of PV panels on the roof. Uh, in, in a sunny, sunny weather, it will produce uh, three kilowatts of, uh, of energy, which is far more than a house actually normally needs. Um, when it's not sunny, we also have a wind turbine, um, which also produces about three kilowatts of energy. So between the two, we have uh, energy being produced for, for the house more or less all the time. You're quite adamant on not using fossil fuels. So what do you use to power your vehicles? Mm, good question. It's, uh, it's not easy because transport energy is, is the most difficult to, to replace in terms of uh, uh, in, in, uh, uh, by renewable energy. Um, and we power all of our machinery by biodiesel. And that is what the team is going to do next. Make their own biodiesel and if it works, they'll use it to power the farmer's tractor and collect wood for a bonfire and burgers at the end of the day. Uh, now the first thing that we have to do is to collect waste vegetable oil in bottles like these. So to work. First, take some old cooking oil. The first process that we, that we carry out is to pour about 120 litres of this. Despite being upstaged by the farm's cockerel, this is the student's chance to show the farmer that they really did learn something back in the lab. Cooking oil or algae seems the science is still the same. OK, well in this process, methanol is reacted with your vegetable oil. It's then converted into methyl esters, which is your biodiesel, mm -hmm. and glycerol. On its own, this reaction would be too slow to be economically viable. That's why you add your catalyst, uh, which speeds up the rate of reaction. And so, it's down to Miriam, the team's top chemistry student, to work out the tricky catalytic reaction. If she gets it wrong, no biodiesel, no bonfire, and no burgers. Okay, through this titration you can work out how pure the oil is and you can also work out the volume of potassium hydroxide needed to catalyse the reaction to make the biodiesel. We've worked out that you need 1.4 kilograms of potassium hydroxide. <laughs> you can see it's nice transparent yellow colour, just exactly as it should be. But will the biofuel work? Time to find out. The whole idea that you can make biodiesel from vegetable oils from fish and chip shops and restaurants, that's, that's really amazing. On a wider scale with biofuels produced from the algae yesterday, the fact that it works in the same way as normal diesel is just amazing. These students have discovered that biofuels are an exciting alternative form of energy and together with wood from a sustainable source, it all means that they don't have to give up on the burgers just yet. But now I know that biofuel is a good thing and it can happen and in the future that could be our main source of fuel.